my name is Lucas, and I will be interviewing Kevin Matson, a violinist faculty member at Bridge Music. Hello. My first question for you is, why did you become a musician? Um, so that's that's a fun fun uh, question, mostly because so growing up, uh, just like you, I grew up in a musical family, and there were seven of us total, uh, which is kind of crazy. But um, I grew up, and uh, when I was the story goes, my mom loves this story. Um, when I was about three, I guess she had a book about uh, musical instruments and had a story, but at the end of the book, there was like a table and a list of all the instruments and what ages you um, could start it, um, that instrument. So according to the book, you could be three when you started, by, or you could be three and start violin. Um, so supposedly, and you know, it's so long ago, of course I can't remember, um, supposedly, I immediately said I wanted to try violin. Um, and then uh, over the years, it was kind of nice to have musician brothers and sisters because it made it, it was kind of, I, I'm kind of a competitive person. So it was nice to like, compete with them. And then when I was a little bit older, getting into college, it was just kind of music itself that kind of pulled me in. So yeah, I think that's my progression. No, that, that's cool. Uh, so my first question would be for you, um, as a emerging violinist, um, first of all, I, well, I should know this, but how old are you? I'm 12. You're I 12. just turned 12. Um, so 12, but you're, you're uh, you know, an advancing violinist. And I know that when I was growing up and um, going through a bunch of repertoire, I always had like my sights looked at like a specific piece that I was always excited to look forward to playing. And my question for you is, um, as you get better and better, what piece are you looking forward to playing the most and why? I probably, I, I've never really like thought about it, but you know, there's just some pieces that you kind of hear like other people play or on the radio or like at some of Elizabeth's recitals, like the last performances or um, like the uh, few pieces or the one piece is like, there's a Mendelssohn um, in E, e I think, E major or E, e minor. minor. E mi yeah. Oh, cool. And so great. my next question for you is, do you think a program like Bridge Music would have helped you when you were a kid or influenced your decision on music? Uh, definitely. Um, and I think even just uh, being a part of Bridge Music, not only it's virtual stay right now, but overall, um, it would have helped me mostly because where I grew up, um, where, I, where I lived until I was about 17. Um, I was in California, but it wasn't close to any city. I had to drive, um, the closest city was San Francisco and it was a little over two hours just to drive there. So being connected to um, uh, a larger city and not just the larger city, but a music community from a larger city uh, like this. So, you know, we have uh, in Bridge Music, there are plenty of faculty that, um, actually have wonderful jobs in Manhattan. Yeah. Um, so if I had that opportunity, it would have been really nice. And even if it was virtual, like, like it is now because of circumstances, it would have been really nice to not have to drive so far to, to do that. So yeah, I would have definitely uh, enjoyed and benefited from that um, for sure. And probably just like, um, especially the fact that now I feel like after this pandemic, there's probably going to be a lot more stuff that's online. I mean, of course, you know, it's not, still never going to be the same as playing like in an orchestra or a group, but like you could have lessons or, or like be taught by somebody that lives like halfway across the planet. So like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and any type of like makeup lesson, if you like miss a lesson and, and you don't have time to like go drive somewhere, it's like, you know, yeah. Obviously, it's better to do it in person, but if you just have one a month or something that's online, it, I agree. Lots, a lot has changed, and sometimes it's nice to look at what, what good has changed. Yeah. Okay. Um, my next question for you would be, um, and I mentioned before that I grew up in a musical family, but in a lot of ways, you I don't want to say you have a more musical family, but your parents are actually professional musicians, um, and so your your whole family is musicians as well. What's your favorite thing about being part of a musical family? Well, so um, I it's nice because like my mom or dad or 
my yeah so my mom or dad like they really can help me especially my dad when I'm learning a piece like he can help me learn the notes and rhythm and stuff and like the shifts and everything because he plays the violin and um that you know I couldn't really learn like the view tom like I'm learning it's really hard um but also then I can practice with my mom because she she doesn't play a violin but she knows like the rhythms and stuff so she can help me with that another thing that I like to do sometimes is I'll actually like play scales with my sister like um like I'll come to her room and um because we we're both learning like a bunch of scales so we can just play them together um my next question for you is what is your favorite composer um this is such a tough question and I'm sure for for a lot of people not just me for you it's a really tough question because I think for me um and maybe probably other people it kind of depends on my mood I've, I always really enjoy Schubert um, chamber music, like the cello quintet and like the piano trio um, and even like his piano sonatas and violin sonatas. Um, so I would say Schubert is kind of one of my overall uh, favorites, but recently, especially with the pandemic and um, being stuck at home, I've been playing lots of um, unaccompanied Bach. Mm-hmm. And, and there's always, um, I think with most violinists, once you become older, there's kind of a connection with a lot of Bach, uh, the unaccompanied Bach um, pieces. But especially when I've been stuck at home, there's kind of a lot of comfort. And um, yeah, I've been really enjoying those recently. Um, Okay, and my final question for you. When all this is done and we're finally able to go safely outside and, and do whatever we want, what's your first thing you're most excited to do? Probably like fly to Canada and see my my grandparents and cousins and aunt and stuff. And also like um, playing music with like other people like that because yeah. it's been so long. I mean, I've played it with my family like we've right. actually because I think for a lot of people, if, if they can't go anywhere, like they haven't played any music with anybody else like at all. Whereas like I, we, I've played like some chamber music with my family. And there's another benefit of having a musical family. Yeah. 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 And I was thinking, cause I've asked a few people this question about what you want to do when we can go out safely. And even for myself, I think something just as simple as going to the movie theater and watching a movie, it just sounds like so much fun. <laughs> thanks for having me on today. Yeah. Thanks for letting me interview you and you interview Problem. me. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Okay, okay. bye. Bye, I'll see you Thanks. later. Thanks.